called 1215, but obviously that that does include, um, you know, some time for questions. And and this is really about your core capability. Yeah, Understood. For the pair planning. Perfect. Thank you, Perfect. Oleg. Over to you. Thank you very much. Again, we'll keep this brief. And just a very quick background. Um, care Vision was designed by Rishi, um, a care homeowner in London, who still owns and manages care homes. And it was primarily built around his frustrations with managing a care home service and how to record it digitally. Um, the other thing that's really distinguishes Care Vision is that we are an all-in-one package. So obviously we have the care planning element, which includes the observations, data notes, risk assessments, etc. But we also feature an email module, rostering module, time and attendance module, kitchen and chef module, housekeeping and maintenance and domestic module, accounting and billing module, and um, also a visitor book portal. So for the staff, for the um, visitors to sign in. So we are all in one single solution without having to use multiple suppliers. Without further ado, let's just give you a quick overview of the CareVision system. CareVision is entirely cloud-based, meaning that from any computer or from any laptop, it can be accessed using your own dedicated sign-in portal. Each staff member has their own username and password, which is gated to certain permission levels. So different staff members are able to see different things on the system. Whenever a staff member signs in, uh, the first thing they'll see is this hand or pop up. And again, that sort of stemmed from Rishi's frustrations where when he would come on duty, he would ask the night staff what has happened during the last shift and they wouldn't be able to tell because they haven't read the handover. It's, meant, it's a requirement. You can bypass it if you're in a hurry, but you will get a uh, you will get a message saying that you haven't read the handle when you sign in. You generally get greeted with an overall manager's dashboard with key indicators that you might need to see within your system. So any of your recent ANIs, including how many are currently active, how many are waiting to be signed off, how many have been actioned, and lots of other key indicators, for example, upcoming in service user birthdays, any existing injuries, all of these are clickable, where if you click on the birthdays, and if it would bring up the upcoming birthdays and the dates as well. Each staff member has their own username and password, so you can see how staff are performing on the system using this sort of leaderboard table, uh, clearly seeing how um, the system is being utilized. On the left-hand side panel is the care module. So this is everything related to the service user care, and you'll find modules like care planning, observations, progress notes, etc. But if we click on our service users first, this gives you an overview of our resident system. So it's structured in a really simple way. You can see the key details about the residents here. You can also immediately see if someone is on DNA CPR or respect form. And you can see that each resident has these alerts. Alerts are a universal care, care vision reminder system about key issues about the resident. So we can see that this resident here, they are on some sort of modified diet as indicated by the SALT alert. They're on DNA CPR, they have a dose and they're vaccinated. Clicking on an alert will immediately tell you things relevant to that alert. So for example, the level and the fluid consistency of that diet. Again, immediately telling a carer what they need to know without reading the full care plan. And all of these key indicators will be shown to the right. So you can immediately see, for example, if there's been a new pressure ulcer or a new injury right at your fingertips. But for the sake of example, We'll pick this resident here called Tim, and this will open up his profile dashboard. We try to go up, keep our interface simple and concise, so all the modules you need for resident care you'll find in the center. All the care planning information you'll find to the right, and it's got this table of contents kind of layout where reviewed care plans are in green, pending care plans, which are essentially just in draft form, are in yellow, and overdue care plans will be in red, and you can cycle between your care plans, risk assessments, assessments, and mental capacity assessments, all in one single go. But where most of the notes are being entered from are from the handheld devices. So this is what I'm going to show you next, just so you get an idea of how the um, how the um, notes are being entered. And this is primarily the, um, the main means of entering notes. Once again, when you're on the handset, you will get the handover pop-up and you can proceed to the handover notes. But we'll go to the dashboard, we'll go to our service users, and we'll pick a resident, again, from the sample list to show you how it works. Again, all the alerts, 
all the DNA CP banners and things like that carry through for the telephone devices. And if we click on Tim and we'll go to his dashboard, again, very similar, but more condensed. The main module is called interactions. And from interactions, you can enter a majority of day-to-day -day in progress notes that are required. They're split into 12 different categories, ranging from vitals to health to activities. Holding over an icon gives you an idea of what's inside a category. So for example, health has your food and fluid, but also medication and nursing related modules. For this example, we'll go into care. And we'll say where we are, because as you will see, CareVision uses this to generate a progress note. So we'll see that Tim was in the bathroom, because it's Tim, and he was in the bathroom. And the carer simply formulates the note based on the icons. So for example, we'll press and wash. And let's say, for example, this person has had a shower, green tick, had a face wash, green tick, but he didn't have his hair washed. And this could be because he declined, maybe he refused earlier, We'll say done earlier by another staff member. And we do try to keep everything relevant in one section. So rather than doing a separate water temperature chart, you can ju just mention that the shower temperature, for example, was 36. And we're going to press on done and we're going to press on save. And you can see that the system automatically formulates the note. Tim was in the bathroom, had a shower, had a face wash, did not need to have hair washed as it was done earlier. Shower temperature was checked, it was 36 degrees Celsius. So without having to write that kind of note on paper, which could take multiple seconds, as well as writing it with multiple charts, it immediately does it for you. And it doesn't have to stop here. You can mix and match with different categories as well. For example, you're not just going to be doing personal care, you may also be doing some oral hygiene. So I'm going to tag a toothbrush as well. And maybe he's done it himself with no assistance required. Press on save and that get immediately added by the end of the note. Teeth were brushed, no assistance is required. And you don't have to stop here. You can press on the pencil icon and you can further bespoke this note because not everything can be covered by the icons or you want to write your, your own notes as well. That's entirely possible. And not just that, you also have the dictation function where if you pick English as your language, it will translate it from, uh, sorry, it will transcribe it from English to text. If you pick a different language, it will actually translate it over from that language back into English. And there's even a read aloud function, both for the staff and for the residents as well. So this is an example of a progress note that you can write from the system. And I'm just going to show you one more uh, just to keep it brief, but at the same time, just to sort of show the capabilities that CareVision can do as far as the system goes. This time, let's go into the interactions. Just a second. And this time we'll go into the um, health category. So let's go into interactions. We'll go to health. Maybe we'll say that he's in the bedroom. And the first thing we'll do is we'll offer them some fluids. So let's go to the let's go to the bedroom. Let's press on fluid intake. And you may notice that Tim has this big red banner saying that he's on level two because if you remember earlier, this dysphagia alert actually also modifies how modules work. So it actually shows you in a module as well. And he has a fluid target, nil out of 1750. So we, we might as well give him some fluids. So we'll start by giving him some orange juice. First of all, we'll offer the amount because we need to see how much was offered. And then we'll say, let's 100. We'll press on done, we'll press on save. But you'll notice I get this big pop-up saying that I have not followed the ITSI guidelines because he's on modified fluids, but if we've given them thin fluids. So as a safety precaution, the system won't let you enter the fluid intake unless you go to the fluid consistency category down below and you say that it's been mixed up to level two. And you can also say that, for example, let's say we used two scoops to um, thicken this. I'm going to press on save. This time we got no problems. And you can see it says Tim was offered the drink, mixed up the drink and mixed up to the fluid, fluid consistency with two scoops of thickener. And just to show you the other capabilities that CareVision has, for example, if Tim was bed bound and you need to make sure that uh, staff actually check on Tim within the room, for example, it could be a night check or a repositioning check, there's these action buttons at the bottom. When you press on QR code, it actually opens up the camera interface in each resident, sorry, apologies, and each resident has these orange QR codes inside the bedrooms 
that then that can be scanned for adding an additional timestamp to say that this has been verified by scanning the QR code inside the room at 11.55. And in addition to that, if, for example, you needed a task that required double, um, two staff members, for example, repositioning or hoisting, you can click on the assistance button and you can either enter the username and password or press on the scan QR code button. And again, staff members can have badges issued to them as well, which allow for quick verification without having to you know, do it on two telephones or like saving the note twice. It just gets automatically credited with the um, with the second staff member's assistance. So we can scan that as well, and that will add it on top of the note as well. Um, there we go. And you can see also Pauline H also assists me forming this task and has been verified. You can see for a second uh, my internet cut cut off, but CareVision offers an offline period as well, so you can continue making your notes from there. And there's lots of other action buttons as well. For example, if maybe Tim didn't drink any fluids at all today and you want to notify other staff members about this, you can click on this handover button and it will automatically flag up this note to go into the handover, the one you saw at the beginning with the orange panel. And there's a lot of other buttons as well, requesting, for example, assessing his mood, requesting consent, for example, if, resident, if Tim has capacity, you can ask him consent as well for any sort of intrusive or maybe um, sort of more, um, you know, sort of more important action that you may need to ask. So, for example, you can ask him for consent as well. You can say how it was expressed. You can even attach an image and audio that can be done as well. And again, there's lots of more other options as well. And this is just one module out of sort of hundreds of care vision. So there's a module for body mapping, there's a module for ABCs, there's a module for one-to-one -one recording. Most of the things that you might need to, to use within your service, anything from general care to more specialized nursing care, your, your pegs, your wound care, everything could be done on the system. I won't go into too much detail, but for wound care, you can go into the body mapping tool, injury management, and you can just add a new injury onto the system. For example, add new. You can click on the location, which loads up the body map as well. You can click on the location where you want to record that injury. For example, the right arm. It will load up the screen where you can specify the type of wound. You can type, you can click on the wound image. And because this is a telephone device, obviously you can use the inbuilt camera straight away to actually populate the, the wound care node without having to you know, save it separately or anything like that. Upon saving this injury, you, you will then be able to write progress notes about this wound as it goes along. When it gets st stored in the care vision records, so we can see the newest wound is at the bottom here. And clicking on that injury again now gives you the progress notes where you can say, you know, you've changed the dressing or you a nurse may have attended it. You can take as many as you can write as many progress notes as necessary. You can take as many pictures as you want and it will continuously update. It will actually interact with the wound care plan as well, where any of your existing wounds will go straight into the wound care plan. Very brief example of the note taking progress. Let's go back to the computer and just show you how you can look and audit these notes. When you click on daily notes on this module right here, you will see all the progress notes done for that resident. Doesn't matter which module, whether it's care plan, whether it's body mapping, everything will reflect on this module. So we can see the last thing we've done was the injury. So a bruise was noticed and then the pictures attached. Before that, we've done that fluid intake. So you can see he was in the bed bedroom after the fluid. And you can even see that this note was done offline, but it, it, it you may have a question where if it goes offline, it comes back an hour later. Will it have the new time or the old time? It will be the old time. We do keep the time in mind as well. So you can see all of your notes here. They can be easily filtered. So if you just want to see, for example, only injuries, you can type in injuries. If you want to search for a particular keyword, like for example, anytime a nurse has come, you can just type in nurse and you can easily find all is sort of universal, all has the same interface, easy to see. From a 
managerial perspective and more of an overall oral perspective, Cavision also features reports and audits, where for the sake of example, you want to see the night checks done within all of your service. We can go to reports and we'll look at the sleep and awake report, which essentially is your night check report. And what the reports allow you to do is they allow you to see your whole service at a glance, not just, you know, for one person. So let's go to reports and let's go to the sleep and awake diary and let's have a look what that kind of report looks like. And just give it a second. It is a rather big report, but it's definitely worth it. So what we can see from here is the total amount of night checks done within a week's period. So there's been a total of 278 checks 248 of them were done using the QR codes. There's been gaps of more than two hours in 126 of those checks. We can also see how many times someone's been tagged as being asleep or awake. And these are actually clickable. So if you click on awake, we can see that, for example, that David here, he's awake way more often than other residents, which could indicate, for example, maybe as a reverse sleep pattern, or, you know, he may need a change in medications. And the exact same thing with staff, you click on it, and gives you like the individual staff performance. So viewing data and processing data is really easy on Kevin as well. So that was just the progress notes side, you know, entering the notes, managing the notes. Very quick overview of the care planning capabilities as well. Ideally, you would start the care plan not with a full resident, but rather at the point of taking an inquiry for your service. So in the admin ribbon, you got a module called service user inquiry. The way this module works is any staff member, maybe if it's any staff member, or if it's maybe it's your admin team, they pick up a phone call, they press on that inquiry, and they can jot down the full inquiry details. You can go as detailed or as brief as possible. So, for example, maybe Simon, Bianca, uh, this is a gentleman. He is looking for a permanent placement. He's currently in the hospital and he's looking for a, let's say, a residential EMI category. The person inquiring, is maybe his, uh, let's say it's maybe his son, for example, uh, Jeff. And we can say that you can mention the fee quote, you can arrange a viewing, but for the time being, we'll just leave it as it is. Um, and we'll just like this. And we can say that this is an inquiry. How did you hear about us? Let's say via the telephone. We'll press on save. So your inquiry gets saved and you can keep as many inquiries as you want. You can keep your historical ones for future reference. Now, we can press on this book here next to this inquiry and you can, you can actually do a pre-admission assessment. What are you actually going to do a pre-admission assessment in person? What are you going to just do a telephone assessment? Or even maybe you just get the summary documents from the local authority, whichever way I still recommend doing the pre-admission assessment because you get this like little tables a folder. For example, let's go to the admission info. So. When do we plan to admit this person? Does the person have a dose in place? Does the person have a DNA or CPI in place? You know, what sort of funding type, uh, what sort of funding are you expecting from that person, etc. But the more interesting parts start when you actually start assessing the resident themselves. So let's click on medical condition. Now you're going to get questions about the person's needs. So for example, is the person a DNA or CPI? We did say that yes. Are they on non-hospitalization? Maybe only for emergency interventions. Are they COVID positive? No. Maybe the high side, maybe they, they are visually impaired in both eyes. And this could be due to maybe they're maybe because they're having cataracts. But their hearing is good in both ears. They have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's dementia. They are not on end of life care. Uh, you can also enter their height and you can enter their weight and it will calculate the BMI on the fly. There's lots of different options, like, for example, some common medical conditions. Maybe he has arthritis, he has hypertension, he has cardiovascular disease. All of these options always feature another section for you to write as well, if you want to add your own bespoke comments. But it asks a lot of questions just to sort of get your mind uh, sort of running. Like, for example, is the person diabetic? Do they have any previous surgeries? Are they epileptic? Do, what's their blood pressure like? You can go through all of these categories here. And if we go down the page, this works exactly like the progress notes you saw on the telephones, where based on your options, the system will um, generate a preliminary support care plan for them. So, for example, Simon is on DNA CPR. He should only be taken to the hospital for emergency intervention, such as a fracture. 
has been tested negative. He is visually impaired. This applies to both his eyes because he has a cataract, but he, but he has a good hearing and this applies to both his ears. And once again, just like the progress notes, you can then further go into the edit mode and personalize this even further. So for example, if you want to stress that he's on the NAS CPR, you can put this in a different color. For example, if you want to just split up his category, you know, if you want to split up his care plan here, you can do it like that. And you can just go through all of these categories. For example, mobility, you know, is the person weight bearing, are they at risk of fall, how do they mobilize, etc. You can even do your risk assessments, assessments, mental capacity assessment, everything at the point of the initial inquiry. And the system will even recommend you some initial alerts that to flag up for that person, because you know we did say that the person is on DNA CPR, so we should, we're going to flag that up. He is diabetic, so you should have a blood sugar alert, and he's at risk of falls, because to remember, I've picked that he's at risk of falls. And the best thing is, is if you press on update and convert to service user, that information will be taken straight away from that inquiry and converted into a full resident for the staff members to go straight away. So we can, for example, give him a room, we can give him a preferred name, and also what you're able to do is you can actually set up baseline requirements to what a person should have in your service. So for example, here, each person needs to have a skin integrity care plan, continence care plan, behavioral care plan. None of these are done yet, but the medical condition and mobility already have some because they were converted from the initial inquiry. And if we press on update, and we'll go to that person's profile, you can see that he already starts with those two care plans. And what, then what your staff do is they just, just go into the full care plan builder and they fill out the rest of the care plans and they can add all of the assessments, they can add all of the risk assessments, consent forms, everything that's available on the system can be done through CareVision. And that's really sort of a very quick overview of the CareVision platform pretty much just a drop in the ocean, but at least I hope it sort of gives you an idea of what everything does, how it looks like, and how it might work for you. Thank you, Oleg. That, that was brilliant. Um, so there looks like there's a lot in your system, and, and you mentioned it's an all-in-one package, but then you mentioned that there's modules. I guess I'm just trying to understand are those modules all in that care planning package or are they additional or an add-on? So I'm just but, trying to, yeah, but, but, understand that. Very good question. So care vision is fully modular. So each one of those packages, like the care package, the rostering package, they're all, they're all within one system, but they're separate modules and they're charged and then work separately as well. Meaning that, for example, you can start with the care package, just run the care package, but then you decide, right, I would also like to use the care vision rostering. You just subscribe to the rostering module and you okay. can start using the rostering module. It's all like add-ons for the base care vision, yeah. which is the base care package. So, so what you demonstrated today was the, the care planning module. Exactly. And all that functionality. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. I believe um, the last few minutes I also left for questions. So um, does anyone... Anyone would like to ask? I'm not seeing any questions in the chat at the moment. If anyone's got any questions, if they'd like to raise their hand, or will put them in the chat. Okay, not seeing anything. Oh, uh, there we go. Yep, Sophie is asking how much per month, please. Perfect. So what you just saw now, the care package, which includes everything you saw during this demo, all the care plans, all the progress notes, all the residents, all the reports, that's eight pounds per active resident in your service. So like an actual a used bed per month, eight pounds per resident per month. And obviously the other packages, they calculate it in a different way. For example, the rostering is best stuff per month. Okay. Thank you. So that eight pounds per month, does that include any devices or is that just for the, the care package, the planning package? 
just the planning package. When it comes to the devices, we don't, um, we sort of don't make any profit from the devices. You, you can actually use your own devices if you, if you prefer as well. The only thing we really do is we just load them up for you. So you have the preference to buy from us, to use your own ones, not a problem. Uh, Michael asked, is this just for care homes? We try to cover it for multiple settings. So it's not just for care homes. Care Vision also works very well in supported living services, uh, nursing homes, uh, for example, um, mental health services. Um, so in these kinds of services, you can use it as well. Okay. Um, so Sophie's asking about domiciliary care. And with the domiciliary care, um, the care package, um, the care package works quite well with the donkey environment. It, you can also build the same sort of structure day layout. The only thing is that our rostering module is more based on like site per site rather than per resident business. So the care package can with, with, work with dumb care, but the rostering package is more sort of designed on individual sites. Um, um, our care is using their own data. Again, ideally, uh, again, as well as due to GDPR reasons, you would probably want to source devices for your carers because they come locked down with only being able to use care vision. You can't take them off sites. It is possible, but highly recommended to just source your own devices, you know, whether from us or from you, from yourself to use care vision. Um, um, so that's that. Um, and how about staff and admin workers? Do you charge? It it, it depends. Like the, the basic admin module, and when I say basic, like basic staff planning, sort of basic room layout, that inquiry module that you saw is free. But there is a more advanced module. Oh, sorry, I think Purified asks, like, do you charge more for additional licenses? No, we don't. Like, we don't have a license fee. So, like, that eight pounds covers as many devices as you want, whether it's computers or telephones. So, yeah. We don't uh, charge in that regard, if I understood that correctly. Brilliant, thank you. So I'm not seeing any more questions at this point. So um, just want to say thank you very much, Oleg. No, pl pleasure being here. And I presume like the staff um, visitors can also ask additional questions after the event as well can be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so if anyone's got any further questions, obviously we can forward those on to you. I don't think at all. Thank Wonderful. you very much. Pl pleasure being here. Um, so do I just hop off and uh, the um, next person? Yeah. Perfect. Again, Perfect. thank you very much, everyone. You have a good Thanks, one. Thanks, Oleg. We've just got a couple of minutes, Jeannie, while we're um, waiting for the next presenter. <laughs>